Lesson three, I will decompose non-unit fractions and represent them as a whole number times a unit fraction using tape diagrams. So first of all, let's review a little bit about what we did yesterday. Okay, so yesterday we decomposed, or lesson two, we decomposed unit fractions. So let's talk about a unit fraction because today we're going to talk about non-unit fractions. So if I had a whole and it was divided into thirds, I would add it, or excuse me, I would create a sum of unit fractions. These are unit fractions. They have a numerator of one, and they have a denominator of how many parts they are. So today we're going to break down non-unit fractions. So if this is a unit fraction, then this would be a non-unit fraction. So we're going to decompose this as a whole number, times a unit fraction using tape diagrams. So we're going to talk about how instead of writing two-thirds equals one-third plus one-third, how can we make this a whole number times a unit fraction? And we're going to get into that in just a second. All right, so in your math journal, I want you to go ahead and write today's date, and I want you to write the title of our lesson so that you'll have a record of what we've done today. And then we're going to go ahead and get started. All right, so first of all, you're going to see this tape diagram. You do not have to draw this tape diagram in your math journal, but I do want you to take a look at it. Here's what I want you to write in your math journal. What fraction is represented by the shaded part? In your math journal, I want you to write what fraction you see. Okay, hopefully you wrote this. If not, I want you to erase and fix it. There are two out of three parts shaded, so this would be two-thirds. So in your math journal now, I want you to write this as a fraction decomposed as a sum of unit fractions. So I want you to write a number sentence just like we did yesterday, which is a sum, which means we're adding unit fractions. So hopefully this is what you wrote. Two-thirds equals one-third plus one-third. So here's our sum, it's addition, and here's our unit fractions, one-third plus one-third. Well, remember... Our learning target today is we're going to decompose non-unit fractions. So here's our non-unit fraction, and this is our sum of unit fractions. We're going to see how we can't create this, change this into a whole number times unit fractions, okay? So we know that there are two-thirds here. We know this because we count one-third two times. One-third, one-third, that's two times. So when you think to yourself for a minute, how could you express this as multiplication? And I want you to write in your math journal what you think this would look like as a multiplication sentence. Pause the video and then come back when you have an idea. Alright, so if I have two one-thirds, I can, instead of saying one-third plus one-third, which is repeated addition, I can say two times one-third equals two-thirds. So here's my whole number times a unit fraction. That's exactly what we talked about in our learning target today. Okay? All right, so if I want to add a certain fraction a certain amount of times, instead of adding, we can multiply. We can multiply one-third two times. What is two copies of one-third? It would be two-thirds. All right, let's try one more in our math journal. Again, you do not have to draw this tape diagram. Instead, I want you to just write what fraction you see that's represented. So count the boxes, write the fraction, and then come back and let's check. Okay, hopefully you counted 7 out of 8, which is 7 eighths. Now I want you to write 7 eighths as a decomposition as the sum of unit fractions. So just like you did for 2 thirds. So if 2 thirds as a sum of unit fraction was 1 third plus 1 third, what would 7 eighths be? Pause the video, write your number sentence, and then come back. Okay, hopefully you took the time to write your number sentence and this is what you had. It's okay if you had 7 eighths at the beginning. I just put it at the end, but you should have... 1 eighth, 1 eighth, 1 eighth, 1 eighth, plus 1 eighth, plus 1 eighth, plus 1 eighth. So you should have 7 unit fractions equals 7 eighths. So today's lesson is all about taking this sum of unit fractions and changing it into a whole number times a unit fraction. So how could we, instead of writing all of these 1 eighths 7 times, how could you change this into a multiplication sentence? I want you to pause the video, try to write this as multiplication, and then come back. All right, so hopefully you took the time to do that, and this is what you should have written. 7 times 1 eighth is equal to 7 eighths. So here's our whole number times a unit fraction equals our non-unit fraction. All right, so let's go ahead and try some of this with our problem set. Okay, so let's take a look at our problem set, and let's take a look at the direction. Decompose each fraction modeled by a tape diagram as a sum of unit fractions. Come back here. 
write the equivalent multiplication sentence. The first one has been done for you. I love it when they do the first one for us because that gives us an idea of what's expected. So you can see that they decomposed this tape diagram into a sum of unit fractions. So here's the one fourth plus one fourth plus one fourth. And then we're going to write it as a equivalent multiplication sentence. So this is basically exactly what you just did in your journal. All right, so let's take a look at B first. So first of all, I've got to figure out what fraction this represents. So I see two out of five. So that tells me that this is going to be two fifths. Okay, so we've got two fifths, and we're going to write that as a sum of unit fractions, equals one fifth plus one fifth. So this is basically what we did in lesson two. Now we're going to rewrite two fifths as a multiplication sentence. So our whole number is two because we have two one fifths, and we're going to multiply it times one fifth. So this means I have one fifth two times. All right, let's try again. Right. If you feel like you can do this one all by yourself, go for it and then come back and see if you did it correct. All right, so hopefully you took the time to at least try to do this. So I see one, two, three, four, five, six, five out of six, and that's going to equal one sixth plus one sixth plus one sixth plus one sixth plus one sixth. So you should have written that five times. As a multiplication sentence, that is 5 6 is equal to 5 times 1 6. All right, let's take a look at D. So, again, if you did not feel confident trying to do C by yourself, well, pause the video and try to do D by yourself. I think this is a pretty easy concept to figure out once you understand what we're doing. All right, so we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 out of 8. So I have 6 A's is equal to 1 eighth, and I'm going to write this six times. So that's 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So much faster to write the multiplication sentence, isn't it? 6 eighths is equal to 6 times 1 eighth. And notice how I make my whole number as tall as my fraction. That keeps me from getting confused between the fractions and the whole numbers. All right, so this one's a little bit different. So you're going to notice, first of all, it's greater than 1, okay? But that doesn't really change anything, except it does change the number that goes on the bottom. If you thought to yourself that this was 4 fourths, that wouldn't be true, because in order for this to be 4 fourths, this would have been the whole, okay? But because this is not the whole, that tells us that this is not 4 out of 4, this is actually four thirds because my whole is divided into three parts. That tells me these are thirds and I have four of them. So my fraction would be four thirds is equal to one third. And you're going to do this four times. And then as a multiplication sentence, four thirds is equal to four times one third. Okay? All right, let's take a look at. Number two, write the following fractions greater than one as the sum of two products. So we're just going to add these two fractions together. So these are greater than one. I know they're greater than one because here's my whole, and then I have more than one whole. So I'm going to look at my whole and see how many parts it's divided into. It's divided into one, two, three parts. So I know that these are thirds, okay, and I have five of them. So I'm going to say 5 thirds. Now it tells me I'm writing this as a sum of two products. Okay, well a sum is an addition sentence and a product is a multiplication sentence. Okay, so this is going to be a little bit different because we did not do this in the journal. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to write a multiplication sentence to represent the whole. So I've got 1, 2, 3, 1 -third. So I'm going to put this in parentheses. 3 times 1 third. So that's the same thing as saying I've got 1 third, 1 third, 1 third. So instead of saying 1 third plus 1 third plus 1 third, I'm saying 3 times 1 third. And then down here, I've got 1 third plus 1 third. So instead of writing that as an addition sentence, I'm going to add this to this multiplication sentence. 2 times 1 third. So I've got 3 times 1 third, that represents the whole, and then I've got 2 times 1 third, and that's what represents what's left over. 
Okay, let's try this one more time. This is new. So again, here's my hole. It's divided into one, two, three, four parts. So I know that these are fourths. I have one, two, three, four, five, six of them. So this is six fourths. So I'm going to write a multiplication sentence to represent the whole. So I've got one fourth, one fourth, one fourth, and one fourth. So instead of writing one fourth, plus one fourth, plus one fourth, plus one fourth, I'm going to say four times one fourth. And I'm going to add that to the multiplication sentence that represents this last part. So I've got one fourth plus one fourth. Why don't you try to write what you think the multiplication sentence would be for these last two fourths? And then pause the video and come back. Okay, so hopefully you said I've got two times one fourth. So we've got four times one fourth, that represents the whole, and then two times one fourth. All right, let's take a look at number three. It says draw a tape diagram and record the given fractions decomposition into unit fractions as a multiplication sentence. So this time we're basically going to do what we did on the front, except we have to draw our own tape diagram and we don't have to write it as a decom decomposition of unit fractions. We can just write the multiplication sentence. So that's going to save us our hands from spending so much time writing. All right, so this is four fifths. So that means I have to divide this into five parts. So if I want to divide it into five parts, I'm going to draw four lines because when I divide, when I draw one line, I divide it into two parts. My second line divides it into three. Now it is divided into four and now it is divided into five. So you can see I didn't make these very even, did I? So I might go back and try that again. So since my first box line was too, um, too little, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. So let's try that again. All right, so I've got one. Now I've got it into two parts three parts, four parts, five parts. That looks better. All right, so now we're going to shade. So remember, I'm going to use my highlighter. You can use your pencil to shade. Just remember, you're going to lightly shade because we don't want to hide where you just divided this tape diagram into parts. So you don't want to take your pencil and color so heavily that you can't see the lines where you separated it. All right, so now we're going to write this as a whole number times a unit fraction. So we've got four fifths equals, and how many fifths do we have? We have one, two, three, four. So we're going to have four times one fifth. So that's going to save us from writing one fifth plus one fifth plus one fifth plus one fifth four times. All right, so if you feel like you can go ahead and try to do B by yourself, go ahead and then come back. The worst thing that happens is you get it wrong, and that's okay. We'll just erase it and we'll work on it together. All right, so my fraction says eighths. So I'm going to divide this into eighths. I like to divide it into half first and then divide it into fourths. This helps me to make my eighths nice and even. So now I've got fourths. So if I come through here and I divide every one of my fourths in half, I end up with eight boxes. So once I do this, I'm going to go back and count and make sure I do have eight boxes. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I do have eighths. Now I'm going to shade 5 to show 5 eighths. So I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And notice how quickly I shade. I don't want to spend 10 minutes coloring tape diagrams. As long as they're nice and neat and you can read them, that's good enough. All right, so see if you can write this as a multiplication sentence. Pause the video and come back when you think you have it. Okay, hopefully you felt confident enough to do this. Instead of writing 1 8 plus 1 8 plus 1 8 plus 1 8 plus 1 8. So instead of writing 1 8 five times, we can say 5 times 1 8. So hopefully you're starting to feel a little bit more confident and feel like you can maybe do one of these by yourself. If you feel like you can, C would be a good one to try to do by yourself because it's just like A and B. If you get stuck on D, come back because D and E are just a little bit different. All right, so hopefully you tried to do this one by yourself and you should have thought to yourself, well, it says seven ninths, so that means I'm going to divide my tape diagram into nine parts. So that means I'm going to draw eight lines. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
eight. So that one worked out pretty well. So let me count, make sure I have nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So now I'm going to shade seven out of nine. And now I'm going to come back and I'm going to write this as a unit fraction times a whole number. So I've got seven ninths. So instead of writing one ninth seven times, I'm going to write seven times one ninth. Now, D is just a little bit different because it's greater than one whole. And I know this because my numerator is greater than my denominator. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to go ahead and draw my tape diagram. I have, I just realized that I have not been labeling my whole in my tape diagrams. Unfortunately, I should have been doing this and I forgot to label this one whole. All right, so, but we're going to do it on this one, okay? So we're going to label this one whole. It's kind of getting a little bit tight. Now, my whole here is going to be less than the whole entire tape diagram because I have more than one whole. This tells me how many parts to divide my whole into. So I'm going to divide it in half, and then I'm going to divide my halves in half. So now I have four fourths. So this is one whole. That's what this is right here, one whole. And then over here, I'm going to have three more. So actually, I think I'm going to make my tape diagram just a little bit longer because I have to have three. Be easier just to add on. So now I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven fourths. So now I'm going to highlight or shade my seven fourths. And then we're going to write a multiplication sentence to represent this. So I'm going to, I think I'm going to do it down here. So I've got seven fourths equals seven times one fourth. All right. So now we're going to try 7 6, and it's going to be very similar to 7 9 because it is actually greater than one whole. So I'm going to go ahead and draw my tape diagram. Go ahead and get rid of these little extra ones right here. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and label my whole here. So I've got 7 out of six. So my whole has to be six parts. So I'm going to go ahead and take my tape diagram and I'm going to make this my whole because I'm only going to have one extra part. So I'm going to make it about right down here and I'm going to label this one whole and I have to divide this into six parts. So I'm going to start by dividing this in half and then I'm going to divide each half into thirds. So now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, six, and then here's my seven, six. It's a little bit bigger, but that's okay. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and highlight seven out of six. And then we're going to come back and write a multiplication sentence. Why don't you see if you can't write this multiplication sentence by yourself and then come back? This will be the last one that you get to practice with me. Okay, hopefully you took the time to pause the video and write this, and hopefully you put seven, six, is equal to seven times one six. So this is a non-unit fraction, which is right here, and we decomposed it into a whole number times a unit fraction. All right, so when you get ready to practice this by yourself, make sure that you come back and use your problem set as an example.